Asia. Yes. Where in Asia? Um, well, shockingly, Australia is in Asia. You, you count Australia as, as in Asia. So let's, so let's go there. I thought. <laughs> let's go there. Let's go there. You actually think there's opportunities in Australia? Well, the reason there's opportunities in Australia, at least for us, you know, for us it's Australia, it's India. Um, it ends up being Indonesia. It's so those countries, and the simple reason is, countries where you had a lot of Chinese companies that had gone there, they used to get their financing from, you know, Chinese banks. And right now, what's happened is China is shutting that off. So you're able to lend to those companies, and you're able to lend on a senior secure basis and make anywhere between 15 to 20 percent. And you're able to use the legal system of those countries. So for Australia, for yeah. us, I'm able to use sort of. Uh, a legal system that I think is very good, same thing in India, and I'm lending at a senior level and I'm doing it probably around a 40% discount. Is there a sector hmm. specifically that you're doing that with in Australia? No, it's all going to be, it's all More very, based. yeah, idiosyncratic. It's very, you've got to find those situations. Do you worry about the economic backdrop there at the moment? I worry about everything. I've got a lot of issues. <laughs> the way the hair is so gray. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hey, I used to be much, much darker. I'm worried I'm going to be like you soon. Maybe. <laughs> I know. Oh. This, this, really, really this, yeah, this is what's going to happen. This is what happened. So, 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 Wes, we've heard where Mark thinks there are opportunities. Where do you find them? Particularly, we've just been following the big banks and how they're having trouble with their trading right now because yeah. there's just not much volatility in the marketplace. There's not a lot of turmoil. Yeah. And that placid pond that Jamie described is difficult. Where do you see opportunities? Well, in the, uh, I think there's good times to buy stuff and there's good times to build stuff. And in these very, very placid times, it's hard to find things to buy. Um, we're having a, a ton of success in building a couple of businesses. One, a big energy infrastructure business we started a few years ago, which is uh, one of the most remarkable things we've ever been involved in. Um, we've got a big healthcare business, a maternity business we build. So things that are idiosyncratic maybe by nature, but there's great things to, to build. Um, you know, I think that in the U.S., uh, it, you can bet on a lack of legislative change because it can be hard to get stuff done. But the executive actions, what they can, what the government can do, and they are doing, is really um, very be very focused on deregulation. So, so I think it's a big deregulation trade in this country. And when you look at the different sectors that could benefit from it, financial services is at the top of the list. So I think there's a lot to do in this country. There's a lot of positive things that could happen on the financial services sector just by virtue of like reducing some of the regulations of the last 10 years. You've had a big change in your business with SoftBank yep. acquiring you. How has that changed your day-to-day -day life and the way you invest? Um, it hasn't changed it much other than I don't have to do earnings calls, right? So uh, we're rooting for being private. I'm, I'm excited about that. But I think from a day-to-day -day perspective in the investment side, it hasn't changed at all, actually. So we're still very focused on our different businesses. Um, we've got, you know, legacy businesses. We've got a bunch of our permanent capital stuff. And then the businesses that I talked about that I've been building, um, we're really excited about. There's been a lot of fun things there. Uh, Jamie, where are we with fees? Fees? Yeah. Um, you mean what we charge? Yeah. Oh, those things. Um, All yes. those little things. Well, you know, it's interesting. We just uh, we were uh, uh, talked a little bit earlier. What I found about fees is uh, investors don't mind paying f fees if they actually think, you know, they're actually getting services for those fees. And I think the challenge is if you're underperforming, if you're basically having a generic investment type strategy, I think it's increasingly hard to justify premium fees. I think if you, like Wes mentioned, you're building things, Mark mentioned, you know, you're finding idiosyncratic distressed opportunities where you're creating a bespoke portfolio where over a reasonable time frame you actually are, you know, creating net of fees, risk adjusted returns that are superior. It's not really an issue. People will still pay for talent. So 2000